Hi everybody, welcome to the video surprise of the day. Today's video surprise is looking at a Lexus GS300 with 231,000 miles. Before we get started, please remember to hit the subscribe button, the bell icon when we notify new videos, and I really appreciate that thumbs up. Thank you very much in advance. Today's special profile is on a Lexus GS300. Interesting to look at what cars last a very long time. So there's a number of vehicles that last a very long time as I found. And I look at this from time to time and I run across one brand and one model in particular, right? This is the Lexus GS300, you know, it's a 2001 model. It has 231,000 miles on it right now. It's amazing, right? It's almost like 20 year vehicle, 20 years, you know, it's still running. It's not a junkyard yet. Most vehicles probably be at a junkyard. Most BMWs probably be at a junkyard. You know, so you can take a look at this and we're gonna dig in and see what kind of things they fixed. And this is from a Carfax website, of course. They post a lot of details. Um, you know, they got the, besides the price, besides the location, you know, this in California, so probably won't have much rust on the underbelly and this car is going to be well maintained and I could tell you that because I actually look at the, the Carfax already and but there's another way to look at it as well too so just a side note if you guys looking into buying a Lexus used one or a Toyota for example Toyota and Lexus actually have more in-depth detail on the vehicle once you have the VIN number that's this one over here vehicle identification number you actually go to Toyota.com or Lexus.com, depending on which vehicle you're looking at, and go to Owners. You go to Owners, and you actually put in the VIN number, and you can put the history of that particular vehicle. You can do that research before you go to dealer and buy that car. I'm not saying all Lexus is going to be that reliable as in 231,000 miles, but, you know, some of them do have problems. Uh, you know, I saw one that had engine problems, you know, and on a few other things as well too you know same with Toyota's so none of them 100% no car is perfect by the way so no you just look at a draw but you know those two ways you could find out the the history of the vehicle even though you don't find anything on say Carfax so there, there are two alternatives I just mentioned to you hope you save some money and do some research right as in all used car you actually could do uh, do a pre-inspection uh, P-purchase inspection. And then, you know, there are a lot of different websites that talk about that. Um, PPI, that's what it's called. Um, so I'm just going to talk about this vehicle. It has two owners. And, you know, it has it's a personal vehicle. It's not a lease vehicle. So that's important. One thing, if you're buying a personal vehicle, also to find out if there's a Lyft or Uber sticker on it. If it is, it's driven every single day, continuously. Well, you got to be careful picking up that vehicle, right? If it's a Lyft or Uber, yeah, it's gonna be a really burned in. So you, you may have problems in the future, so. And pulling this side up. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through the detail on this one. This is a two owner vehicle. Of course, the GS300 is a rear wheel drive vehicle, not front wheel drive, like the ES, for example. ES is a bigger vehicle than a GS. But the GS is more like the, the size of a Camry, for example, all right? And luxury model, keep that in mind, the parts and components will probably be more expensive compared to say you buy a Camry or, you know, for example, right? Okay, so this one was purchased in 2000. Wow, that's even very long. It's 2020 right now and the time I'm making this video. It's actually September 15, 2020, okay? And it's been used as a personal vehicle. The first owner had it for about 12 years give or take a few weeks. And second owner had it for eight years. Amazing. Most cars don't even last eight years. Most people get rid of their cars in five years or less. Average of power around seven, I guess. But that changes from time to time. All right, it's no total loss, no structural damage. Of course, this is shown on the Carfax. If there's really body damage, you wouldn't know unless you get looked at by a body shop or a mechanic, you know, professional that could see the difference, right? All right, so there's not a lot of mileage info on this side. 
I think. It, so it starts out at 48 miles and it's purchased, registered in Berkeley. So, and it's been serviced in Lexus of Congress. So a lot of service, you know, is showing up over here and very good record keeping. You know, Carfax is really helpful with that. And actually they do have a website to help you with the maintenance as well. But, uh, you know, I'll put it in the link if you're interested in that. I don't get any payment or anything that from Carfax, just something to help you out. I use it myself too. It's not 100% accurate if the dealer doesn't report it to Carfax, by the way. So, so you've done this maintenance. You know, you see the oil changes here, tire rotated, you know, another service maintenance over here. I don't know for what, but it's serviced. Another one over here for oil. So I'm guessing maybe 5,000, another 5,000, you know, got the brakes adjusted. You know, very well maintained overall during the early life of this vehicle. And you can see this over here. And brake, parking brake adjusted, air filter replaced. Some of this oil filter thing you actually could do it yourself. You know, you don't have to hire somebody to do it. I have videos on that. Also, you got brake fluid check and all those things. I guess they went through the package deal. Parking brake adjusted again. So, but they also did over here, it's the 40,000 mile service. And, you know, looking at these dates, they're pretty consistent overall. Um, no gaps or anything like that. So they actually didn't neglect service. 40,000 mile service, you know, you could read through it. You know, of course, the oil change probably be part of it. So all these checked didn't really do anything and just looked at it and later on they also changed the air filter again coolant change which is really nice otherwise your rear may rust if you don't take care of that and it's good to have thin coolant in there in the system as well too so well well maintained uh 55k service over here i'm sure that's oil included you know specify it and you got more maintenance down the road, you know, pretty much well maintained, let's put it that way. I'm not going to drill on every single bit of information over here, but here's some more expensive maintenance, ball joints replaced. So the wear and tear comes in over here. So you can see that. And you got brake rotors for service, brakes are done. Now you got the light, license plate lights replaced. Now you got I don't know why they call another 15k service done so they started out i think they already 115k that's what they i think they were talking about then you know there's uh, maybe another uh, 5,000 miles service again and 30,000 miles and right over here i think carfax either changed the way they logged the, the mileage or something like that there's more information so and initially 120,000 mile the first owner did the you know, inspection. But there's all of a sudden, you know, to start using a different mechanic, I guess, with over so many miles, there's not much information over here. So that's something maybe this one wasn't maintained that much anymore or wherever. So they fail a mission, then I guess they passed again after they fixed the issues and they use a separate mechanic, I assume. So and also the emission passed. But after 2007, they start having a private mechanic. There's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, in five years or so, they kept it for another five years. So I wouldn't say the vehicle's in bad problem, in bad situation with any problems. The owner too gets it, right? They probably uh, trade it in to Redwood City, maybe another dealership right here. And great, great service overall still you could tell the history i don't think they skipped on it it just wasn't reported and as in any lexus you probably could look it up on lexus.com under owners and register this VIN number to get more details right if they went to a lexus dealer they then and you know the out of luck okay only lexus dealer and toyota dealer would have come has some VIN number and information as well and you can see the vehicle, the second owner maintained it also at the dealership. Amazing, right? It's getting really old, but they wouldn't spend the money on the oil changes, which is really cheap compared to the engine. It's been passing small. And to a point, then, you know, the, the second owner decides he needs to sell it, right? So um, 
that's pretty much the history if I were to do a playback on this thing. And what I'm saying this vehicle has been well maintained all its life. I'm sure the first owner didn't skip and stop using changing oil or anything like that. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, just a number of Lexus vehicles, especially the GS, I've seen that last very long. I mean, I've seen 300s. Uh, so 200, you know, 230,000 miles. Well, let's go back to the other. 231,000 miles and 447,000 miles. In my opinion, okay, it's a very long car, uh, you know, long and reliable car. So, you know, it's not like it has an engine replaced or a transmission replaced. Of course, you have some spots you didn't really know about it. But then again, it's still like, it's still running afterwards. It runs a long time. So I actually like to say, and for one, it helped me make my decision to buy a Lexus and a GS because I plan to keep this vehicle for a long time. I really love this vehicle as well. It's very similar. And it's one of the, the things that, you know, made my decision a lot easier, even though these are more pricey. The way to go around this actually is to buy a uh, CPO car, certified pre owned. You know, so that means they have all the warranty for two more years after the regular warranty, which is four years, expire. So if you pick it up on the third year, it's got another one year factory and two more years of uh, CPO, Lexus certified uh, warranty as well, too. So if you were to pick up a GS, you know, and you can have a reliable vehicle. And that probably hold true with other Lexus vehicle as well, too. Maybe the ES, for example, and others. Um, so what I'm seeing, most of them are GSs. Uh, not that much ES, but I'm sure there are a lot of ESs around. And I'll probably do some research on that as well, too. Uh, video is getting quite long. So I want to get your feedback. What kind of vehicle you have? How many miles you have it right now? You know, is it over 200? Is it over 231,000 miles? And what kind of repairs you have? You can post it in the comments. That'd be great. I always like to learn what other vehicles are out there that last a long time and you know what's the cost if you've been through a lot of transmissions i saw one video somebody had like four transmissions in the odyssey for example and it's you know it's still like four transmission at four hundred thousand miles i mean that's like yeah you threw money at it but it's still the engine was good probably but you spent a lot of money to maintain it so the maintenance cost went up this one, I don't believe the maintenance cost was a big thing. Uh, but then again, you know, there are a few years that are missing, but it's had 231,000 miles and it's about $6,000. In my opinion, there's no interior pictures. I wouldn't assume anything, but I wouldn't buy a car with too many miles if possible, right? Then again, you needed a transportation, don't have a lot of cash. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know how to give a suggestion on that. So anyway, I hope you liked this video. I really appreciate a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.